45 ACP versus 10 millimeter. Is there even a comparison? Let's find out on this episode of Ultimate Barrier Testing. Here at Banana Ballistics, safety is our number one priority. Wait, but this shield has holes in it. Here at Banana Ballistics, weight savings is a close second to safety. Now let's check out that first target. Round number one is exactly what it looks like, a piece of 6x6 pressure treated lumber. Let's go ahead and throw that in, and then it's followed <coughs> by a 3 quarter inch piece of plywood. In case you're not aware, I'm going to be shooting two of each cartridge on this lumber right here, and I think we're good to go. We have a bit of a dilemma. The 10 millimeter is more powerful than the 45 ACP, but obviously the 45 ACP is a much larger diameter. Which one should I start with? I chose a 10 millimeter. Now let's get started. Oh man, that one was about as close to the edge as you could get. Now let's check out the back. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I'm not saying that the 45 ACP can't do it, but it's not looking too good. The show must go on though. Two rounds on target, we're looking good. How about that? We're not looking good, guys. It definitely did not go through. So I just cut the cross sections of each and the 10 millimeter went way deeper with one bullet coming in at 4.658 inches and the second one coming in at 4.686 inches. The 45 only penetrated 2.98 inches and the other one only penetrated 3.063 inches. So the 10 millimeter definitely won this round. And here's a picture that I thought was pretty cool. Well, I think it's time to take out the trash to make way for the next target. You can stay though. And make way for the next target we will. Oof. Oh, it doesn't get any lighter. <laughs> Round number two is perhaps the most formidable target, eight inches of sand. Guys, I don't know if I could put into words just how difficult it is to get through this box here, but we're gonna see if the 10 millimeter has what it takes. That one came in a little bit further left than I would have liked, but let's turn it around. Absolutely nothing. I really don't think anything would have come out the bottom either. That is crazy. A 10 millimeter, you would think, might have a chance of going through this box. On to the 45, though. All right, I think we're looking good for the 45. Surely, with how often I hear people say that their 45 AARP, I mean ACP, can hit like the hammer of Thor, that it can go through this box, but uh, let's see. Right on the money, but let's turn it around, be strictly professional about it, and see what we... Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. And these are what those rounds looked like coming out of the sand. So the 45 barely deformed at all, but the 10 millimeter actually mushroomed out quite a bit for a handgun. Still though, this round is a draw. All right, get the box out of here. Good. Do a little flip. Good. And put some little wings on. We are good to go. At least for the next target. <laughs> Round number three is solid concrete. It may only be a little over one and a half inches thick, but boy does it know how to use it. To shred bullets, that is. Anyway, let's see what these cartridges can do to the bullet shredder. I think we are good to go. I think I learned my lesson from the last testing video, so the camera is much further away this time. On to the 10 millimeter though. Well, I forgot to record me shooting that shot, and I hit a little bit lower than I would have liked, so how about we try that again? Let's see if any portion of the bullet... Oh, oh. There we go. That looks like it's part of the 10 millimeter, and I don't know if that's a good sign or not. Now that is exactly what I'm talking about. Let's see what happened to the three quarter inch Pete nothing. Oh well, let's see if there are any bullet fragments anywhere. I, I'm, ooh. <laughs> 
Whoa, there we go. Basically the whole jacket on that one and ooh, there's the lead core as well. That is super cool. Definitely keepsakes there. All right, I think we're good to go for the 45. Thank you for hanging in there, three-quarter inch piece of plywood. You've been doing great. Do you know what time it is? It's 10.45. No, I'm just kidding. It's actually 11.46. That one was also pretty eventful. Let's check out the damage though. So there's a pretty big portion left and absolutely nothing on the three quarter inch piece of plywood. Still though, let's check for the bullet anywhere. I don't know if we're gonna see it anywhere. Oh, okay. I think this one looks pretty new and it almost bonded together. I mean, obviously it didn't bond because the jacket's coming off, but it's all in one piece. That is pretty freaking cool. Don't need you, don't need you, don't need you. Okay, and we'll flip you around. Just in case we need to use you like this for our next test. Nope, I'm not shooting steel with these cartridges. But what about the 10 millimeter? Nope. I don't care. Okay, I actually have shot the 10 millimeter at mild steel before and here are the results. Let's start with an eighth inch mild steel plate and see if it can go through that. Whew, I thought it went through, but that is definitely not a hole. Dented the shit out of the back of it though. Well, can the 10 millimeter at least go through a tin can? The 10 millimeter definitely has the can covered. So basically the 10 millimeter completely sucks when it comes to mild steel, which is why. Round number four is clear ballistics gel. Whichever cartridge makes a bigger wound channel while staying within the FBI penetration sweet spot will be the winner on this test. And I think we're good to go. To test the expansion of these cartridges, I have one of the most popular self-defense loads out there. That's right, the Federal HST. Thank you to Federal for sending this ammo for this test, and thank you to Clear Ballistics Gel for sending this block. If you think that the 45 has a deep hole, it does. But the 10 millimeter is really not that far off, so let's see what happens. I don't have a good way to chronograph these, so here are the box numbers. Oh man, I thought that block was a goner. I thought it was going to fall right off, but let's check out the uh, wound channel. Okay, pretty decent. And I don't see a bullet in there. Okay. Okay, there's the exit hole. I guess it went straight through 16 inches of ballistic gel. Now... Did it get stuck in the railroad tie? I don't see anything. Let's try and find the bullet. Okay, okay, there it is. And it looks like that is perfect expansion, but I guess where it came out of the bottom here, it impacted the steel maybe? That's why it got flattened out a little? I don't know. But that is super cool, and it definitely went through 16 inches. Can the 45 compete with that? Ooh, I don't know. We'll have to see. That one landed a little closer than I would have liked it to, but uh, looking at the top, we can still see two pretty distinct wound paths. And the 45 ACP got stopped pretty short of, obviously where the 10 millimeter went through, but uh, it got stopped pretty short of the end of the block here. I think we need to head back to the bench and do a little bit more investigation. Because it's time to heat gun. Nah, that one's just not as fun to say. <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious that the 10 millimeter won this round. Unless you're concerned about overpenetration, then maybe it didn't win for you. But just in case you're curious, both cartridges started opening up right at the half inch mark. And the widest point I could find on the 45's permanent wound cavity was right at 688 thousandths. And the widest point I could find on the 10 millimeters permanent wound cavity was 707 thousandths. So it was pretty close. But the 10 millimeter carried this permanent wound channel much further than the 45. Obviously the 10 millimeter 
penetrated more than 16 inches, but the leading edge of the 45 was only at the 12 and a half inch mark. Both bullets came in at well over one and a half times their original diameter, and both held right at 100% of their original weight. But let's be honest, the 10 millimeter definitely won this round. Moral of the story, I think it might be time to put a best millimeter in your collection, but that might just be me. Thank you.